<laughs> Hi, so, <everyone>. guys. <laughs> Toby's stealing the intro. <laughs> well, Anyways, go for it. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another new episode of Live Crypto Tips. I'm Toby. And I'm Heidi. And we're glad to have you guys all here. For you guys who are tuning in, don't be shy. Say hi in the live chat if you like. Uh, a lot of seeing a lot of the regulars. Dragon Ball, Crypto, Metal Bum again. Hey. No problem, jo Dragon Ball. Yeah, Tubby was happy to provide the list. Tiago Rush, Anthony Pre, Dave D, HR777, Sergio. What's Sergio. Up? Hey guys, good hey to see B. you guys here. Hey Dave, David Lynn. Cool. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so we got some interesting things to talk about today. Like, for example, oh, not this, this. <laughs> oh, by um, the way, to start what? off the show about the market right now. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. Toby's market analysis. What Don't is worry about it. It's just whales trying to take coins away from you. Keep in mind that you have <laughs> um, all these billionaires that are trying to get into this space now. You have Paul Tudor Jones, now you have MicroStrategies, now you have everybody and their mother yeah. that has billions that wants to keep their, you know, their reserves safe or whatever. Yeah. And so they're going to want a good price. And so they have the best bots in the world. They've been <laughs> doing this for forever. Yeah. And, you know, you have Wall Street now that is getting in, involved heavily. And so I think this is that. And, um, yeah, they're going to do whatever it takes to get their coins. They're going to smash the price like you've never seen before. And it's going to be completely fine. So don't worry about it. Just keep hodling and get your coins off the exchange. Um, and definitely, uh, yeah, buy some more. You know, like if you have spare change or whatever, just continually purchase some dollar cost average. Yeah. I think it's the smartest thing to do. BTD. What does that B stand for? Buy the dips. Buy the dips. <laughs> yes. Buy the dips, definitely. Hey, so don't everyone. worry about it. All the greetings are flowing What's into up, the Dan? live chat now. What's up, Panda? What's up, Andrew? Hey, Robert. Glad you made it in DD, today. What's up? Robert. Oh, snap, Brad. Hi. <laughs> cool. Okay, so. Grateful. Um, up, talking of, of these bullish signals of these big guys getting into Bitcoin, MicroStrategy is a company whose whole thing is. Pretty much, I was. It's an oracle. Pretty much an oracle before oracles and the blockchain happened. It was a company launched in 1989, and what they do is they develop software that helps identify the trends within the technology sector. And now they develop mobile apps that address those trends that they are picking up on. Um, and yeah. this is the big company that put a large amount of their. Uh, uh, cash reserves into Bitcoin. Uh, they did one big chunk, and then like a few weeks later, they they went ahead and added even they topped it up uh, their Bitcoin. Um, so this guy, the <laughs> yeah, I know the chat, Sergio. Yes, the chat is on the live stream. Thought I'd make it give you give you guys some airtime as well. Um, try to try to make it kind of more interactive here in the live chat. But so anyway, so the CEO. Um, Michael Saylor, he he said some he said some fighting words, especially for people who aren't Bitcoin maximalists and who might be definitely for those Ethereum maximalists, uh, mm -hmm. striking striking a nerve within the maximalistic tribalistic uh, communities here in crypto. Basically, by saying uh, Bitcoin dominance is currently at ninety three point five seven percent because he completely cut out Ethereum from that. Uh, uh, equation because that's what you do you know you take the uh you pick the and you cherry pick. S &P 500 you definitely want to cherry pick and just pick one yeah and then say yeah uh, <laughs> in reality if you do include all the <laughs> cryptocurrencies listed i think bitcoin is around um 53 or 57 percent dominance pretty much how how much of the market is involved with bitcoin um so it's kind of funny this right right off the bat this little quote it says MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor embraces crypto tribalism shortly after his Bitcoin U-turn. Um, and there's just some funny commentary about, I mean, there's one, oh wait, where is it? Oh, sorry, I'm all over the place here. Okay, so it's saying he rec recently became one of the most influential voices in the cryptocurrency space because he bought Bitcoin. 
Really? <laughs> like you're missing Come so on, many man. other influential and actually, you know, uh, enacting change, people actually doing something, actually contributing to this space. Just because you have a bunch of money and you throw it out this space doesn't make you a big deal. Yeah. I, that's, that's, uh, somebody should tell Michael that. <laughs> we'll tweet at him maybe. <laughs> Gosh. Man, um, this yeah. space got a lot of learning to do. I mean, and, but really what he was, he was trying to justify this by saying that, uh, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency asset where uh, Ethereum and stable coins are crypto applications networks. I don't know how stable coins are an application network. Um, but anyway, I, just trying to justify his reasoning for, you know, Bitcoin superiority. Now, this today's video is going to talk a lot about the happenings of Ethereum, just because, let's face it, that's where a lot of activity is happening. That's where a, a lot of things are to talk about. Um, and for those of you who are in the CT Club, who've watched my videos for years now, you know that I hold Bitcoin for a reason. I'm very comfortable with in, having invested in Bitcoin, continuing to invest in Bitcoin. Um, and also, I'm not a maximalist. <laughs> I do appreciate the other innovations that are happening in this space and the fact that it's developed in, a, in an open source way that facilitates uh, that kind of growth. So anyway, uh, moving on to the next story. This was an interesting article going over uh, this, their, uh, Coindesk interviewed Matthew Lysing, who wrote a, a book, Tim Draper calls it the definitive book on the early history of Ethereum. Ethereum's like six years old. It's the early history. It sounds like I'm like in, in, in high school, in history class or something. Um, but so it's really interesting. It talks about, you know, what lessons were learned from that $55 million DAO attack that happened back in 2016. I think that's when it was, 2016. DAO attack, yep. Yeah. And I... Uh, you know, that being the first implementation of a decentralized autonomous organization, this whole concept of allowing anyone to essentially be a venture capitalist to supply money that would be investing in brand new technology, brand new companies. Um, it raised a lot of money. It raised like over like $200 million or something. And uh, over a very short period of time, um, the code was untested. Yeah, it was one of the largest new. crowdfunding in history. It was within a year of Ethereum's launch, they did the DAO. So that was like really DAO the disaster. first. Yeah, that was like really the first uh, implementation of smart contracts in a really serious way with all that money on the line. And so pretty much, you know, what, what was learned from that? Lessons should have been, you know, the okay. unaudited code <laughs> and the rampant in money just getting thrown at something that really wasn't anything solid. And nobody understood. So <laughs> shortly That's after the that, thing. there was, well, a year later, there was the ICO phase, a couple years after that. But now we have the DeFi space, each of yeah. these involving smart contracts, each of these seeing massive amounts of money getting thrown um, at these new and up and coming uh, technologies. And so, the more yeah. money that's thrown into these things, the more comfortable other people feel. So they think the more money that's going into something, the safer it is. So it's like. The that's whole thing is really... high risk, high reward. But <laughs> high risk. Let's not forget that part. Man. But so, yeah, I. but this is, I think, uh, uh, the. <laughs> ramification of people this is the first time where anyone can participate unless you're a u.s citizen at this point i'm sorry for laughing mostly anyone can participate in these new upcoming technologies anyone can be a venture capitalist and that's why like the the people are often astounded by the amount of money that's being involved in like the ico bubbles there's there was ICOs raising like EOS did like a billion dollars. There's like hundreds of millions of dollars over and over again and getting raised for these different ICOs. The DeFi space has like $1.5 billion locked up in it. Um, and it's more now. It's, it's kind of a, it's a testament to the amount of money that isn't that has been waiting to uh, be utilized and to be invested in ways that just wasn't possible before. So that to me is really exciting and it's really uplifting that this it's a perfect representation of all that this space is going to allow 
you know, life-changing things to happen and, and the sense of freedom and kind of autonomy that it can give. Um, I just want to read this comment. I'm Ron. I'm sorry if you're Imran I'm Ahmad. Ahmad. Hi, Heidi and Toby and the rest of the viewers. I'm fairly new to the cryptocurrency world and learning a great depth of information by watching your videos. Thank you so, so much for posting them. That's great. I'm glad that we can help. Yeah, That's thanks, the man. whole point of this. So sure. thank you for those for letting us know. Um, are you guys holding Neo and are you aware of the mint rush that is taking place over the, the next... Brad, the only way I know that is because their marketing team re <laughs> reached out to me to see what my advertisement, paid advert, what my, my shtick is. And I, I just said, please remove I, me from your list because I don't had, do paid advertisements. I've had Neo but, since it yeah, first came out. But that so was an early one. That was a long... And long that was like our kind of our first actually introduction to collect, like getting uh, staking, staking rewards. rewards. Yeah, through gas. Collecting that gas. Yeah. And then realizing how small amounts of gas like, are. Jeez, really, guys? <laughs> a year, I get like uh, a couple hundred bucks in gas. All yeah. right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Dee says, pro tip, Bitcoin dominance is at 100% if you exclude all coins. Also, yes. water is wet. Everything. Yes, that is confirmed. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, Menho, no, I have not uh, mentioned the sushi swap yet. That is coming up right, actually, right now. It, it's a segue. I'm talking about, we you know, what maybe wasn't necessarily learned from the DAO is that, you know, people are willing to take on risk. Maybe they don't understand the risk, um, but they are that eager to finally have an opportunity to participate into something at like the ground level. That's like something like this, such a scammy phrase to me, but uh, <laughs> you know, get in at the ground level. Um, but so. Uh, I think in some ways it's safer right now and then some ways it's more dangerous. Oh yeah. Because I mean, you've had- It was brand new back then. Yeah, the which is, okay, so like three years ago, you know, the DAO came out and, and then, you know, uh, that code has been tested now. So people have hackathons and all these things to try to find attack vectors into their code to see if they're buggy or not. And, you know, they've had years and years and years of this, which is really great. And now, you know, you're coming out with these projects that start out with like billions like pretty much right out the gate. And, you know, that that can be scary. That's a honeypot right, th right there. So, you know, yeah. this code needs to be really solid. And I think a lot, for the most part, it's pretty solid code. I and mean, they're constantly working on not it. Not only like the, the smart contract itself that's holding these, but also the, like we saw with SushiSwap and with a lot of these other ICOs is this like founder's reward or this uh, pre-mine, yeah, bucket load where they're getting rewarded for something that ha hasn't even been launched yet. Uh, real quick, Trent and Paul, thank you so much for that tip. Some That's great. Some for the next cooking show. Yeah, Thanks I'll have to take some more. Uh, if you guys have any <laughs> Thanks, suggestions man. or requests for the cooking show, let me know. For sure. I'll try that out. <laughs> maybe it'll be something I haven't cooked yet and it'll be a hot mess and maybe it'll be super funny. Um, anyway, uh, we were saying oh, about well, 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 things that we've learned. Yeah, so I, I think like, you know, these co these uh, smart contracts need to be tested, and um, I think that for the most part they're they're good, but you never know, guys. You never know what type of hacker is going to be able to smash this code and break it and pull the rug out of uh, out of an entire project. You know, so I don't know, and a lot of people don't actually know either. So just because it. Uh, um, a smart contract has been audited doesn't mean that it's 100% safe, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, just because... Who's doing the auditing? And that, yeah. I mean, it, it, of regardless unknown, of who does the <laughs> auditing, like, you know, there's a lot of smart people out there. And yeah. if they just miss one little detail, yeah. man, they got to they're going to lose a lot of money. Yeah, and that's even happening. Like, Bitcoin even ha had a bug that uh, was patch or whatever like two years ago but they had to wait two years to announce that it was even a thing because they're waiting for all the nodes to update so like even with bitcoin even with the most sturdiest the most you know kind of safe haven cryptocurrency there's still that possibility i don't which think is that crazy code was, think. i don't think that was very critical it was <laughs> it wasn't labeled critical on a out of on a on a scale of one to ten okay, it was an okay. eight sure it was an eight all right all right so yeah, it was, but anyway, um, <laughs> um, let me see. Okay. 
so sushi swap talking about you know things that we've learned smart contracts sushi the defi spin. space the sushi swap has been something that i mean guys really it's quickly, just given us so much to talk about don't you about feel like i mean whoever likes sushi in here doesn't sushi. that make you just want to yeah. s- salivate K- whenever Toby you K- go to that website you're like oh that looks so good <laughs> the oh my gosh okay this is i need to make money now <laughs> totally <laughs> drooling yeah um, or lose it. Yeah, if anyone knows a good sushi <laughs> place in Portugal, let me know. <laughs> that would be great. And if there's any questions out there, we had got the um, the uni. Um, oh, the airdrop. The airdrop, and got out pretty much within a day. So yeah. So if anybody oh. wants to know if we're holding. That wasn't a trade alert. <laughs> oh, Patreon. well, I mean, it wasn't a trade alert that we got it. You know yeah. what I mean? I wasn't going to hold on to it, so it. we're not going to, like, mention much. Uh, I guess we, we should have. Sorry. Yeah, we should have. Trade alert. All right. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so Sushi <laughs> Swap. Um, this one has been, you know, shrouded in drama since pretty much the launch um, with some of their strategies of, like, being, like, a vampire code, trying to encourage people to use Uniswap so then they could eat encourage those people to use sushi swap by using their reward mechanisms um but so now you know the founder took the uh developers uh, pile of cash and he decided that after a week's of work of worth he 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 was valued at about 14 million dollars he cashed it out into ethereum and now he gave the ethereum back now they there's this thing where like they secretly launched this new uh, liquidity pool for Uni and Ethereum. And the thing is, apparently it became live and they didn't make a public announcement until five hours later. What happens here, and I'm going to go over this. Slimy people. I'm going to go over this in one of my in <laughs> an upcoming video talking about Uniswap li- liquidity pools. I'm also going to go over this as well this concept in my next class for the CT club members um, happening Wednesday at noon Eastern time going live. So again, I encourage you guys, if you're in the CT club, try to catch it live so you can ask me your questions in real time and I can get to them. But the way the liquidity pools work is the liquidity that you are providing to that pool, whatever percentage of your coins make up that pool, that will determine how many coins you are rewarded. So a bigger chunk of the pool that you're contributing to, you're rewarded a bigger chunk. By these uh, guys not uh, releasing this for five hours, it gives them a decent amount of, of time to they accumulate a lot, a, lot of of, a lot of coins before ultimately they're their stake would be diluted by other people entering that liquidity pool. And apparently this article is saying that's like a a common practice now, or it's probably going to become a a common practice, but it's just one more indication. You know, all these things of crypto space, we always have to say time will tell time and again, you never know what's going to happen. I actually did a live stream with Naomi Campbell or (laughs) Naomi Brockwell. I can't believe I said that. Naomi Brockwell, a couple, a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe, where we this was just happening and we talked about it. And she said, you know, maybe he'll give it back. And maybe she has a magic black ball because like a week later or a few days later, he decided to give it back. Um, I mean, you were giving him crap for that. Everyone was giving him. It was He was an easy target for that. No, I mean, come on. But uh, come on, so, so there's all these indications of like, you know, you have to look at the... Uh, Who's behind the project? Uh, you know, it's all into like doing your own research and trying to determine, you know, the the safety. Not like, and we're talking about the safety of smart contracts and the code. Like Sushi Swap is not the safest by far either. Um, anyway, so what? That's an interesting quote, guys. What do you think about the future of banking? Granny mm. and Auntie won't be buying on Binance. Have you mm. looked into projects like DUSK Privacy Blockchain? Have you? No. I have not. But I can tell you the future of banking is going to be um, way different than it is now. I mean, for instance, my, you know, my mother who doesn't know much about computers, you know, she can send an email Mm -hmm. and she can shop online. So, (laughs) so with that said, you know, things, you know, you know, 20 years or 10, 15 years back, there's no way she could have done that. So, you know, things change, things get easier, and the way, the amount of innovation in this space is going crazy, especially in the, the, the decentralized part, the decentralized finance. Like, 
banks are screwed. Like nobody's going to put their money into a bank when they're giving like negative interest rates when you can just go on to this space and, you know, make at least 5%, 6% a year, you know, at that's like the most conserv conservative number, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, so I think they're they're pretty much dead, you know, unless they um, change their ways. And I, I can't see them changing their ways too fast because they are so huge. They're giant dinosaurs, you know, and you being like that big, you can't just be flexible and change your ways right away. You know, there's a lot of bureaucracy and there's a lot of money. There's a lot of funding behind that with central banks. So, you know, they don't want people to have that opportunity to make, to essentially be their own bank, first of all, which puts them out of business and, you know, it makes them obsolete. So this is totally the antithesis of, uh, of, of banks. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my thought. And additionally, it's going to be a generational change just like with most any technology is the older generations are going to deny it because they're so ingrained in the ways that they know things have worked for centuries for their entire life. It's understandable that most people would be kind of closed minded to something so new and so disruptive and so kind of threatening to things that they might trust like governments or banks or things like that. So the grannies and the aunties like Maybe in like 30 years, you know, yeah, they're going to have been around crypto for uh, for quite some time at that point. And like you said, it's going to be so well developed and we're going to really get a better understanding. The developers are going to have a much better understanding of what people need and want and how they can address that in the user experience. So, yeah, this is the uh, your reward for being early is we got to we got to be the trailblazers really of this new technology and kind of. <laughs> suffer uh, and, and we are that. the trailblazers i mean we are the people that are climbing everest here not yeah. the guy that just put in you know 450 billion dollars that guy's not you know a, a mountaineer <laughs> that guy's like <laughs> oh went, we just uh, paved pick. the trail for him to go up to mount everest <laughs> exactly. which we've been to about a dozen and a half times and now he's going to give it a go but he's got his whole army behind him so you know, and yeah. that goes for every other billionaire that's going to be hopping into this space. Just watch. Yeah. That's why the price is getting smashed. Yeah. I'll leave it to you. Okay. Um, talking about Binance and, you know, how they're working with uh, people in crypto. No. Um, talking about uh, the risks involved in the DeFi space. They are still a plenty. Let's not act like there's, there's no more risk anymore. Um, but so there's been some funny things about Binance lately. And you know, you guys know, I love to not love Binance. Um, but I'll, <laughs> and really the CEO and just is kind of, I don't anyway. think he likes you either. It's, it's a helpful, <laughs> it's a helpful exchange sometimes if you don't need to go through the KYC, but I'm not storing any coins on there. That's for sure. Whatever. At least um, you're not as bad as BTC. <laughs> so, so there's been like some dra drama, not really, like certainly not the worst drama CZ has ever had, um, but about how their token listing policies, you know, um, for a long time they had this position where like it's kind of hard to get listed on Binance. It's kind of like a, a, a achievement to have been listed on Binance. But now with this DeFi thing happening and these tokens popping up like crazy, and the fact is that most of these tokens, you know, they had a lot of hype at first and they do kind of die off. Like it's just kind of what's happening with Sushi actually. Um, but so Binance obviously is a businessman and he wants to profit from those brand new tokens. And he's, I think he's getting tempted by that greed a little bit because he want, they once had that position of, you know, being kind of a reputable place to be listed. They go through all this intense uh, uh, investigating of the coins or maybe they require a large investment by the coins to be listed on that exchange. Um, and he, I think it's now a deleted tweet, but CZ did have a tweet where he said like, I don't, yeah, the tokens listed, I don't even know who the founder is. Like he didn't even go to the website <laughs> and like scroll to the bottom to see who the founder is. Um, but so now I think to kind of, uh, you know, save their own butts and to kind of relinquish that responsibility of, of you know being a responsible exchange that actually exposes their users to reputable coins that aren't complete vaporware. Now Binance is making users, or I guess they're just posing two questions to users where they answer yes or no, 
And if they answer no to either of these questions, then they cannot get exposure to these certain DeFi coins. So that's okay, I guess. Um, but it's also Binance, you know, kind of admitting that they will be listing a lot of vaporware. So these two questions are uh, whether a user is ready to take a 50% or more loss of their principal capital. And second, whether the user is ready to take responsibility for that loss, as in they can't blame Binance <laughs> for having listed a crappy, crappy token. And, um, and, and, and you they, can only imagine the user going, oh, yeah, 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 hurry, just get me in the car. I want to buy the coin. FOMO, <laughs> exactly. FOMO, FOMO. Like, come on, man. I mean, like, nobody's going to read that. Nobody's going to care. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Get me. Just, yeah. I want the coin. I want the coin. I, mean, I don't know exactly. Take my money. <laughs> is that, is it, pretty is it pretty much what they're going to Give me money. Here, please, please, please. Just take it. That's what they're going to do. And my people, is like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's FOMO. You can just imagine the thousands of people that are FOMOing yeah. every time they're, they're yeah. the new, and that's, brand new freaking DeFi coin. Talk, talk about, you know, just seeing the indications and seeing how things play out over time. The people who are involved in this space for a long time who are in charge of centralized entities that are incredibly profitable, like Binance. Binance makes so much money every quarter. Like they blow big major banks out of the water, by the way. That's going to affect, affect their greed at some point. Let's be real. Um, and it's a centralized entity, so you can do whatever he wants. And, and it people, is what it is. Well, people also say really quickly that, that you know, Binance is getting destroyed because of the decentralized finance area like the yeah. the decentralized exchanges well binance isn't going to let himself go like that he's going to build a decentralized exchange Pretty to good. put him i know i know but like a real one and put him out of business <laughs> you know what i mean he already built a real I, one whatever it's he not put a dex right in the name bull crap that's bold not a, move that's not a uh, decentralized exchange, <laughs> he, exchange. Should, he should it's call a, it binance non-custodial i mean if he's being honest there Binance is fake <laughs> decentralized exchange. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so that's that's what's kind of happening here, developing in the crypto space with Ethereum specifically. Next week, I'll try to make it a little bit more uh, evened out. <laughs> Brad says, and XTZ is on sale it's... right now. <laughs> David D says, everything's on sale. I'm like, yep, everything is on sale. Don't panic. Yeah. Don't sell your coins. Are you going online shopping now? Like, today? <laughs> geez, man. Go surfing. I yeah. prefer you go surfing. So, so these guys are going to eat you alive. Like if you're, if you're trying to trade it. Like you're not gonna win. You're just day not gonna win. It? Yeah, yeah, like day trading right now. Like, like let me ask you, who, who uh, yesterday? I want to know who yesterday posted. Oh yeah, we're gonna see this oh, price today. It? Yeah, who called it? Out of all of those, Probably no one. those trader guys, that yeah. super super popular guys that have you know two hundred thousand plus, you know followers on Twitter or whatever. Who called it? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. They're all guessing, man. That's it. Mm. Anyways. Um, That's why I hold. Yeah. Yep. A link for what, IP? Um, if you if you link no that's oh that's link showing? uh yeah that's oh, going to oh, be uh, <laughs> that's definitely I would consider a buy as as well. I I mean who knows how low it's gonna go. <clears throat> you don't know how long it's gonna go, yeah. and nobody with two hundred thousand followers knows how low it's gonna go. <clears throat> but you don't need to know. All you need to know is that, okay, I believe in a project. I think it's going to go back up. Yeah. That's it. You yeah. know, the safest, safest, the safest investment is Bitcoin, obviously. Yeah. And Ethereum. I think Ethereum's great. It still has the army behind it. Yeah. So. Ethereum is interesting. Ethereum's great. It's interesting. I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh what was i just gonna say yeah if you guys want to like maybe learn more about the kind of mindset of surviving crypto markets like this we did a great interview first joint interview toby and i uh we we interviewed shosh from altcoin buzz uh that is definitely oh, naomi campbell that's who we did <laughs> naomi brockwell i'm gonna be on naomi's show on thursday yeah at uh what time 2 p.m eastern time so if you guys if you're subscribed to naomi brockwell great if you haven't i highly suggest it it's a great channel i'll be there going live with her uh and again wednesday noon eastern time ct club members going live talking to you guys all about decentralized exchanges any questions you might have uh, if you're in the ct club please either post them in uh, the comments for the appropriate 
announcement or uh, take part in that live stream and ask me live so we can help other people too who might have that question. And really quickly, I'm getting a lot of questions on what coins are you selling? We will announce on the CT Club if we are going to sell anything and we aren't selling anything right now. Yeah. So, yeah, just letting you know. Can't wait for until we do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, take some profits, we'll not see. everything. We're not going to We'll let you know, though. Anyway. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, for participating in today's live chat. We love it the, seeing you guys all here. We'll be back again Monday, always, as always, Mondays at noon Eastern time. And I'll be pumping out some videos in between. So hope you guys are staying happy and healthy. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys.